brothers and sisters here in Masjid India in Kuala Lumpur Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It is something very strange indeed as we address you tonight on the topic of the future of Islam in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Kashmir not the future of Muslims, Pakistanis not the future of Bangladeshis the future of Islam in this region of the world at a time when very strange things are happening in the world very ominous things, dangerous things are happening in the world it is clear for those who have been studying what's happening in the world that we are now located at a very very dangerous moment in history that in the same way you had the first world war a hundred years ago and then you had the second world war about 70 years ago that we are now located at that moment in time when the world war of world wars is about to take place about which Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam had prophesied but he didn't call it world war but the politicians in Pakistan and the politicians in Bangladesh and the politicians in India don't study this subject politicians don't study this subject he didn't call it world wars what did he call it? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam spoke about the malhama the malhama the great war so first world war and second world war were only preparation for what is now about to occur and it is going to impact on the whole world but it is going to impact very significantly on India, Pakistan and Bangladesh Israel is likely to launch those wars it could be one of four targets and you know it already it could be Pakistan and the Pakistanis know it that's why the Israeli Mossad and the CIA combined to launch the 9-11 terrorist attack on America why? because they wanted to get an opening into Afghanistan so they could send a few hundred thousand troops into Afghanistan so they can use Afghanistan as the base to destabilize Pakistan the only people who don't understand that are the politicians everybody else understand that because if a politician were to say Israeli Mossad did 9-11 that's it he's finished as a politician the Zionists are not going to support him they're going to finish with him <laughs> so the politicians know where they get their roti from and so they'll know what to say and what not to say and so an attack on Pakistan was prepared since 9-11 10 years now and the attack on Pakistan is meant to destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons why? because Israel wants to rule the world 
Anyone who has studied the Quran and Hadith properly would know that Because they have studied the subject of Dajjal Israel wants to rule the world So that A man can stand up in Jerusalem Tomorrow Meaning about 20 years from now And declare I am the Messiah al Masih. But we know that the Messiah Or the Masih Is Jesus Nabi Isa alayhi salam So who would he be? He would be Dajjal In order for him to declare I am the Messiah He has to first make Israel The ruling state in the world And then he can rule the world And say I am the Messiah That you understand already But in order for Israel To rule the world Israel has to wage great wars and that's the Malhamah that's coming But Israel cannot wage great wars if Muslims have a weapon With which they can significantly threaten Israel And so no Muslim country must have nuclear weapons That's the new religion of Israel That's the new religion of Zionists That Muslims must not have any weapon with which they can threaten Israel But Pakistan has that Thanks to Zulfikar Ali Bhutto Who did many bad things But this was a good thing that he did Thanks to Ziaul Haq Marhum Who did some bad things But Alhamdulillah he died as a mu'min And Shaheed And uh, <coughs> others as well Who not only Brought Pakistan into the nuclear club But kept Pakistan there In order for an attack to be launched on Pakistan To destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons You will also have to break up Pakistan So that Pakistan can never revive itself Because the Pakistanis are going to be very angry who is going to do that job? To break up Pakistan? You don't need a PhD to answer that question, do you? Israel's most strategic ally in the world today After the United States is India India used to be secular India Under the Indian National Congress But now India has become Hindu India And this Hindu India Is joined with Israel In a strategic alliance And so India is going to play A significant role In that effort To denuclearize Pakistan And to destroy and break up Pakistan Into bits and pieces I believe the Indian Muslims already know that They know that And so that is one of the possible wars that's coming And so we have three possible battlegrounds already One, Pakistan Two, Iran Three, three uh, Syria and for the fourth battleground is possibly Egypt because Israel Israel wants part of Egypt's territory because of something in the Torah the Torah says that the Holy Land extends from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates Meaning that part of Egypt From the river Nile To the Red Sea belongs to Israel <laughs> What do we do? Israel is going to strike 
And India is Israel's most strategic ally, ally in the world after United States. And because the attack on Pakistan is pre-planned, we know it's coming. And the plan is to create an independent Balochistan, which will be another Libya, a Zionist state. And take part of Sarhad and put it into Afghanistan to make a greater Afghanistan, Pakhtunistan. And take that part of Pakistan, which is called Azad Kashmir, and make sure it goes back to India. And take part of Punjab and part of Sin and absorb it into India. And maybe even create Karachi as a city-state. What remains of Pakistan would be bits and pieces, bits and pieces that can easily be controlled by India and will now exist under Indian hegemony, political and economic and even cultural. Since we know that this is coming, what do we do? I want to now turn to a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam connected with India. The word India does not occur in the hadith. In the hadith it is the word Hind. Hind. And Ghazwa, Ghazwa would be wars fought by the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. But because this is a war which will take place at the time of the return of Nabi Isa alayhi salam, perhaps for that reason it is known as Ghazwa. Allah knows best. Ghazwa tul Hind. Hmm? That there are hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and I I'm not in a position to assess their strength and authenticity that there will be an end time, meaning Akhiru Zaman, conquest of India or conquest of Hind, not India. But there is also an end time conquest of Constantinople. <laughs> Constantinople. This one is a very well established hadith very strong that the Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that Umranu Baytul Maqdis at that time when Baytul Maqdis or Jerusalem is flourishing like it is today under the Yehud under the Zionists it is re center stage today at that time would be Kharabu Yathrib. Yathrib or Medina to Nabi would be in a state of desolation, playing absolutely no role on the stage of the world. Not even in Islamic affairs. That's Medina today. The time of the flourishing state of Jerusalem would be the time when Medina would be in desolation. The time when Medina will be in desolation will be the time when the Malhama will come. The big war is coming, where most people will die. The time of the Malhama will be the time of the Fathul Constantinia. The Const Constantinople will be conquered at that time in Akhiru Zaman. So the conquest of Constantinople 600 years ago obviously, obviously, obviously could not be what the Prophet is talking about. Hmm? And the conquest of Constantinople will be the time of the Khuruj of Dajjal. Khuruj of Dajjal. Dajjal's release is one thing. Dajjal's Khuruj is another. He was released in the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He is the mastermind of the modern political system which has paralyzed the world of Islam, imprisoned the world of Islam. 
he's the mastermind of the modern economy and the modern monetary system with this paper money he is the mastermind but you cannot see him at this time he's not in our world of space and time but his khuruj when he comes out you will now see him as a human being and the prophet said Islam, you'll see him as a Jew as a young man powerfully built with curly hair meaning curls on the side like the Orthodox Jews hmm? so we have not only the conquest of Hind but the conquest of Constantinople now when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns he's coming back as Hakim to rule so I asked last night would he have to submit to the authority of the Security Council of the United Nations huh tell me huh obviously not tell them that in Washington for me when he comes back he comes back to rule the world which means he has to rule over the Zionists which means he has to rule over India India will have to submit Hindu India will have to submit and therefore whether you have the Ahadith or not about Ghazwatul Hind it is clear to me that there will have to be an armed conquest of India in order to ensure that India submits to Nabi Isa alayhi salam who is going to be in that army it will have to be Mujahideen I don't think the standing armies of the modern secular states are going to do that and what kind of warfare will the Mujahideen be waging when there's all of this oppression upon them and the wars are going to start soon I hope the Pakistani people are listening because I expect the Pakistani people to take the leading role Oh yes, in joining their brothers in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is up front. Afghanistan has waged successful war in resisting the NATO Zionists for 10 years. An embarrassment for Barack Obama. <laughs> That's Afghanistan. And I'm expecting second in line to be Pakistan. This is why I'm asking the young Pakistani men, get out of the cities. Get out of the cities. Move to the countryside. Secure your water and your food. Secure your families. Because you are going to be on the front line. And it's not going to be conventional warfare. I think it's going to be about 20 years of guerrilla warfare. That's coming up. Afghanistan style and I hope these words of mine reach the young Pakistani men and the young men of India and the young men of Bangladesh there are others who are not going to be part of this struggle who are they they are those who disregard what I have said tonight we have to go and vote we have to vote for this one or that one or that one they are stuck into that electoral political system based on shirk you can speak to them but it's like water falling on the back of the duck they won't listen to you these people who what regardless of what you say they're still going and vote for this party or that party vote for this man or that man I don't have any words for you I don't know what to do with you you're not going to be part of the struggle for the future of Islam